Ladies and germs, before we get into this episode, quick disclaimer, this was the first episode we ever recorded, so the audio isn't the best, but you likely are here to listen to Freddy and his audio and his video, they're, they're fine, they're totally good. So I ask you to bear with it because this is a phenomenal episode. Last thing, since we did film this a few months back, we couldn't talk about his newest single, Wrath, which is now out streaming everywhere. So definitely go check that out and look out for more singles that are popping up this summer leading up to his new album. All right, with that said, enjoy the show. So he can hear you? I think he can hear me. You can hear her? Uh, say, say a sentence for me, Six. A sentence? You cannot kick it off any better without the best guest in the game. Welcome, Mr. <laughs> Fredward Dreddington. I imagine we just have a class. Hey, yo, thank you. Thank you for having me, Lucian. How, thank you for I, having me, Six. Hello. How are you feeling today, brother? I'm feeling fucking... You know, it could be better. There's a massive snowstorm <laughs> going on where I live. Okay, so. we're going to start this. Six had a great question. Okay. Would you rather... Wait, what was your question <laughs> about earthquakes? I was because, you know, we live in California, so we have to deal with earthquakes than tornadoes or snow, really. Um, we, we live in Southern California. I was gonna ask you, like, would you prefer to deal with earthquakes or you're like, no, I'll just, I'd rather just deal with snow. No, no I would fucking prefer to deal with earthquakes. Really? You don't have to Whoa. lift up your gravel and like shove that onto the side. It's Whoa. like physical work and shit. I, I've only ever been through one earthquake in my life and that was the first time I went to LA. And it was like a, no. like a, like a, I don't, how big, it's like a big uh, like like earthquake. Six? Would you say a like six? a six? A five point something? Five, yeah, anywhere. It was like a 4.7 <laughs> or something. Oh, okay. Like fours. And I, I was in LA. It was the first time I was there. So I was two days in. And, uh, <laughs> what year is this? I was laying on my stomach on this couch. And I was on my phone with my feet up in the air. I was just having a good time. And I thought my friend picked up the couch and went like this with it. And shook it around. And I was like, what the fuck? Why'd you do that? And I turned around and he was at the other side of the house. He's like, did you fucking Running. feel that? Yeah. It's like, no goddamn way. That was an earthquake. I, oh, wow. But, uh, I, would, I would rather deal with earth, earthquakes than snow. Oh, for wow. sure. We're speaking from a privileged point of view. We've never had to deal with snow ever, ever, right? I mean, uh, especially, so you, you today had a, a three hour snow shoveling session, am I correct? <laughs> yes, I did. That's you are correct. Right it was there, three right? hours and I didn't even fucking finish it. It was terrible. We got about a foot and a half of snow, and I had to bring like two inches of snow and go like this for three hours, and I didn't even finish it. Dude, I was sweating. I cried at one I'm point. Sweating. Okay, what is the, what? Tell me that experience to be sweating in and, the and snow. Cold. Yeah, it's your your body's freezing, yet you're sweating. That's that's crazy to me. The thing about Canadians is that you'll never be cold. You'll never be cold in the winter. We have about seventeen types of thermal wear like at all times in our closet so you just fucking put that shit on and you're sweating balls even before you leave amazing so. let me ask you this what can you explain to americans from a canadian standpoint what is a soaker what is the day oh of my a god soaker? why do you have to always ask this are you aware of the term a soaker a soaker i know i this? No, but I, is it like a, it's like probably like a spring day when the snow is melting and the cars are pushing all the slush up on the shit and you're walking home from school and your shoes and socks. Yeah, that is a soaker. And it's terrible. That you get so home, good. your feet are all like, like Moist. pruned <laughs> and they're itchy and it's terrible. It's fucking, it, a, what would you call it? A it's called soaker. a soaker. So, a soaker, a soaker day is one of the worst days. And if you're in like high school or like elementary oh, school yeah. or something. Yeah. You're screwed. So you're this you're done. Fantastic video from this one comedian that I love, and he made a whole. He did ten things that Americans don't have to worry about that Canadians do, or something like that. And the first one was they don't know about soakers. And I was like, what is that? So I had to ask the man himself. But look, you knew you knew your Canadian trivia. I don't. I didn't even know that had like a like a name. A, but a, a soaker. I I only assume that's what a soaker is. <laughs> now he's like, I'm gonna go now, yeah, yeah. calling it that. It's fucking soaker today. Yeah. Oh man. It's not a soaker today though. It's all fresh snow. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I barely got wet. I was just fucking. I was like Crazy. packed with snow. Yeah. It stuck to me. Incredible. Speaking of, let, let's just jump right into it. Speaking of Canada and weather, uh, your song "Weather." It that's 
that was one of the first songs that me and her both heard that we were both like that was this, the first song we heard because I, I, because we're good friends with chance and as you wear you know slippy j toad the man himself right shout out that boy <laughs> that boy right shout out to you chance right no we were hearing his song before oh, okay that's true well obviously cha-cha okay obviously that's the that's the number one obviously right the hot one but for some reason, something about weather. weather was me and her were like, this is some shit. Like, what is this, right? That's when we knew something was about Fred Widget, right? And um, so I got to ask, what is the story behind that? The sample, everything like that. I, I, I feel like there's a good story to that. How, how did that song process go? So yeah, growing up in Canada, like, it's always cold during the winters and stuff. And the summers aren't too bad. They're not bad at all. It's like, it's not like spring weather or anything. Mm -hmm. It gets fucking hot. Oh, wow. Or at least where I live. I'm in Ontario. Um, but when I made that song, I was uh, staying in LA for three months and it was the summer and it was, uh, I was in this shitty little <laughs> apartment complex and um, it was just hot. Like I couldn't fucking go outside for a cigarette. I would stand out like I hated it. It made me so uncomfortable. Like I would have my shirt off. I'd be in my underwear, oh, smoking my a cigarette, trying to hide from people just because I hated sweating. I wanted to take off my own skin. And then I wrote that song. It was just too Amazing. hot and I was getting pissed off and I wanted to move back to Canada because it was getting <laughs> into the fall season. I was like, it's, I bet it's fucking nice. Well, and amazing. And, uh, you know, our beautiful manager, Wayne, Jeffrey Bowers, uh, so he told me a uh, some story about like the sample due to some of the topics discussed and the graphic nature involved we cannot go into further detail so let's get back into the show and enjoy okay i see your uh she thinks, I, she thinks i'm in my room <laughs> i see your half your half life tattoo on your finger am i correct yes yeah, sure okay, people think ready? it's a apex twins okay. but it's oh. not Yo, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it does kind of look like the logo. I didn't know, I had no yeah. idea that it was so similar. I have I have a great question, or I have a great um, thing about this. Is she going to be good? Yep. Okay. So, every time you would talk about Half-Life, I've never played it. I've never experienced Half-Life. Oh, wait. Have you met, oh my God. Have you met our beautiful dogs? I think he has. I think I have on FaceTime. Yeah, this is Seven the Pug, and Nico, our handsome boy. They're gonna join the <laughs> Cute pod. little doggies. Oh, hello. So, with Half-Life, I've never never played the game or anything, right? I just, I literally know it from you, right? And until one time, um, I looked up, I was like, okay, I need to look this up. And the game looked really familiar. And then it like hit me. Um, I, do you remember Machinima? Like the game, that gaming channel and like- Yeah, they would do events. like shorts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red versus blue was on. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? Um, there was a whole uh, channel- Freeman's Mind. Yes! Freeman's Mind. Freeman's Mind, dude. Um, wait, what was Yo, it shout called? out, shout out Accursed Farm. Accursed, yes, Accursed Films. Okay, episode 22. That was, dude, I clicked on it randomly when I was like 12 years old. Had no idea what the game was. Thought it was the funniest fucking thing in the world. And um, so I just think that's so funny how, like, you love that game. And I thought I had no connection to it. And then I was like, dude, Freeman's Mind. So I Yeah, that, to, I that was a good series. You, yeah, I wanted to know if you knew about that. Um, yeah, of course I do. I watched that and, like, I played it when I was a really young kid. And then so yeah. when Freeman's Mind was coming out, it was like watching, Amazing. like, how 50 year old women watch soap operas. Like I was yeah. waiting for the next episode and shit. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I clicked on episode 22 randomly, didn't even think, and I was dying hysterically because that guy was so fucking funny. But now I'm gonna go back and like watch the whole fucking thing. Um, it's, a, it's a still a good series, it holds yeah. up. How do you, it holds up. How do you feel about video games as a whole? Like what your influence on your music, influence on who you are? Cause I, like, I, I don't know if you can see, I have a, a huge SSX tricky portrait over there, dude. I oh, know, yes. That's, that's, that's tricky. I, have, I have Neversoft tatted, like, for Tony Hawk, Pro Skater, and everything. Like, video games has just been a big part of me, right? Even though I don't, I'm not, like, heavy into it anymore. How would it, how has it, like, affected you or your music or anything like that? Well, the, yeah, I've been a gamer my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was pro probably, like, six years old, I got my first gaming system, which was a PlayStation 1. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And um, I played, I had... A few games on it. I had like NHL Stuart Little 2, which is an amazing <laughs> game. Amazing. I still love it. Stuart yeah. Little 2 is amazing. Uh, and then 
I, I, I just had, I would rent games. I, I can't remember if I Game, really, Game really Fly. liked anything like that. Gamerfly or whatever, right? Did you have Gamerfly? Yeah, Fly? Gamerfly. It was, Game uh, it was, I think that was owned by Netflix. It was the same idea as Netflix yeah. back yeah. in the day where they I would think, send think, you the DVD. I yeah. think renting games was really like back then, like a number, was, num- huge. was, huge. It was we, huge. I think I used to rent games all the time. I thought it was like literally five bucks a month for a new, dude, how many games did we beg our parents to get? And maybe we dug it for like a week or something and uh, whatever. That yeah, was, you get bored yeah, of it. Yeah, Gamefly was amazing. Okay, but go on. Yeah, so with Half Life, is I was I was gaming like right when I was a little kid. Like I was obsessed with it. Yeah, I think it was because I would see my older cousins and they were into it too. And my older brother, he was into that type of shit. Yeah. And then so it wasn't until I beat Half Life. I got <laughs> Half Life when I was like seven or eight years old oh, that yeah. and that was the first video game I ever beat that I actually cared about because I would just like play video games and yeah. then I'd get bored of it because I couldn't beat the level or something. Yeah. Half-Life was the very first game I ever beat and I became obsessed with Valve. Okay. So I was just playing G- ever since then I got obsessed with Team Fortress 2 which is the <laughs> other tattoo on Amazing. my finger. I got yeah. stupidly obsessed with that um, and then it's just gaming's just been a part of my life all the way up until I started making music. And when I first started making music, I was on a Fallout kick. Like I was <laughs> yeah, yeah. obsessed with Fallout. Never played it, by the way. You've never played Fallout? Never. I've always wanted to, but never played it. Yeah, you give give a Fallout three a go. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like Fallout three was like the main one. It reminded me of like when Halo three came out. Everyone was like, start with Halo three or something, you know? Yeah, Fallout three and Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, New Vegas. Your Very good game. Mason still plays that. Wait, really? Yeah, New Vegas. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a beautiful game. The graphics make it Amazing. so good. <laughs> oh wait, no, I'm thinking of Rainbow Six. My bad. I don't know why. I thought Rainbow that. Six. I had Rainbow Six Rainbow on Six PC and never, I never could play it. It was too. There was too much shit going on. Yeah. Well, to me, I was I was such a diehard COD nerd, and so was she. So when I was like, Rainbow Six is just a knockoff Call of Duty. So I was like, fuck, I don't care. So, I thought it was, when Rainbow Six Siege came out, I'm like, this is just a knockoff fucking okay. Counter Strike. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. Okay, but go on about Fallout and stuff. Yeah. So when I started making music, I was gonna base my whole persona <laughs> off of video games. Yeah, amazing. I thought if MC Chris, you know who MC Chris is. That's. I want to say that sounds familiar. But I'm not sure. He, he's like a video game nerd, but he's also a rapper. But he made like video game raps. He's very okay. corny, but I liked his music. That sounds he was so also familiar. a voice actor on uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. He was uh, MC P Pants on the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got you. And then, uh, no. so that I made a group. Like I, I was watching. Like uh, I was really into Xavier Wolf. That that was like oh, my absolutely. biggest inspiration. I saw yeah. what he was doing. He had his own little crew, the Hollow Squad, and then Bones had his little thing going on. Shout out Bones, dude. Team Shout Sesh. out Team Sesh, dude. Shout out Team and, Sesh. And like me being like a like a sixteen year old kid, I was like, I could fucking do this shit no too. Problem. I'm gonna, because they were doing it all at their in their homes and shit. They were yeah. just like flexing. Yeah, we have our own home studio and we just do it like yeah, no help. This is like 2013, right? Like around there. Yeah, like around then. Yeah, and uh, so. I was like, I could do this shit myself. I made a group called the Pit Boys. The Pit Boys. A Pit Boy is like the thing on Fallout that you look at, I think. Oh, I haven't okay, played these you. games yeah. in years. But I was the Pit Boys. And I was yeah. going to like get like artists and producers and all that shit. That was my first idea. Dude, it was amazing. And then ever since then, video games have influenced me so hard. I have a song called Meta Vito, which is Half-Life in Italian, I think. I can't remember. <laughs> I think it's Italian. Amazing. Dude, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, I, I I always wanted that too, you know, because like, um, I remember for some reason when I got into making beats and shit, it was always like the, the trifecta. It was like beats, uh, video games, and anime. It was all three of those that mm-hmm. just connected everyone who, oh, and skate and, and skating. Like it was all four of those, you know? But, oh, yeah. By the way, have, do you skate? Have you skated in your life, or are you just like like skating? I, I I love skateboarding. Like I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Like today, but I, you will never catch me on a I mean, skateboard. When I was like ten years old. Yeah. I could have been professional. Yeah. I could have been. Oh, I I, wow. I could tray flip, and I was ten. At ten? Yeah. There's. I have a a yearbook where um. I was. I think it was in third grade, and wow. it was like these little pictures of all of us. We're all you know third grade. <laughs> and we everybody had to write what they wanted to be when they were older. Uh-huh. Yeah. And everybody's writing actor, doctor, police officer. 
Wait, like, wait. all this, like, regular kid President. shit. Yeah. And, like, this is low-key embarrassing, but I wrote West 49. And if anybody looks at that that's not Canadian would be like, what? What the fuck is yeah, West, West 49? 49? Yeah. What I meant when I was <laughs> in third grade, I was obsessed with skateboard. Wow. I had, like, all, like, these DVDs, like, the Baker DVDs, and, like, yeah. there was a store, there's a store in Canada that's, like, Zoomies. I don't know how old is no, Zoomies. Wait. Well, okay, I, it's like twenty years, ten years. Twenty. 20 years. It was like the Zoomies of Canada. Oh, that's incredible. So they sold like skateboarding shit there. So I would get that all my stuff dream. from there, and they gave me like their team, like DVD of them skateboarding. So I wanted to be like a professional skateboarder, and what I meant by that is that I wanted to be on the West Forty Nine team. Dude, like, I was obsessed amazing. with it. What like, team? What team would you if you if you were like plan B, plan if you B. were good as him and your brother? Yeah. What would you have been like? Plan B, that was first. I, I loved Plan B so much for some reason. Like, they had P Rod and Jeremy Rogers at the time, and Danny Way, Colin McKay, like these legends. Uh, that and um, and girl, I was gonna say, yeah, right, the girl video 2003 with uh, um, Brandon Beeble. He opened it up. That was the that is the have you ever seen? Yeah, right. I, I'm not too familiar with any oh, of that stuff yeah. anymore. Like, that's all like hidden memories at the back of my mind yeah. because. <laughs> When I stopped skateboarding or when I stopped caring about it, like, that was it for me. Yeah, well, because you posted a clip of, I think, from Fully Flared on TikTok a while ago. Or you, you did a clip, a skateboarding clip on your TikTok, and you are like, classic. I remember it. Like, this is like a year ago or something. I can't remember that. You have, you have, you have, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. You just have good yeah. memory. But, okay, but on your song Doom Set, right? I don't know if Ryan C. produced that or someone else did. Uh, that was a uh, Sodi Air and okay. uh, and Five X's. Okay, shout out to them. To them, who was it? Their idea to use the, the Tony Hawk sound, Pro skater sound, or the to yeah, or Thug too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was. Uh, I could be wrong. I'm sorry if you listen to Sodi Air. I think that that's like one of his tags. He used that oh, quite often in his amazing. beats. There was this incredible sound in uh, Tony Hawk's Underground Two, and every time you achieved uh, a mission yeah. or goal. It was like a DJ scratch sound. Yeah. It's like, bam, chicka, bam, like I think I, I, you play it. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think it. I've heard it. Yeah, and they use that in the beginning of the song. And to be honest, that was like always in the back of my head. I was like, oh, that'd be sick to do something like that. That's fucking brilliant. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah, love that. I, those dudes are like really into skateboarding. All right, Sodier, oh, oh, he's amazing at skateboarding. Yeah, that's incredible. And like, dude, that I that's why I liked, I wanted to bring it up to you because I peaked at skateboarding at nine years old, and she's a woman. She sees me. And, but no, 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 no. Uh, when I peaked, say peak, peaked more like not doing any tricks. Not good, dude. I kid you. I love skateboarding. Like the culture, everything about it's fantastic. I still, I I started skating when I was six years old. I still can't kick flip. I shit you not. I still can't even kick flip. It's a and, scary thing, dude. Yeah. I try. I, and, I'm like, I know how to do it. I can remember where I need to kick the board. Yeah. I can't commit. I cannot commit. It is I, fucking yeah. terrifying to complete a skateboard trick. I think trick. for me, when I see you guys skateboard, I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand it. Like, the <laughs> physics of it. Yeah. Do you get me? The physics, physics it's, and It's gravity. amazing. I'm like, how do you guys... How do you like, stay on the wait, board? I'm like, yeah. do you guys not, like, put straps on the board? And it's such a, like, a girl thing to ask. I'm, right, I Like, I feel you. like every girl's like... So how, how do you, do you keep your board? feet on the board? Like, yeah. how does that happen? <laughs> well, I think it's just so funny because, like, yeah, I don't know what it is, but I, I just, I loved it, and I still stuck with it for a while. Shit, my bad. Um, I think it's still good? Cool. Um, Time for your 3 o'clock shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I my still, timer has to tell me. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> but, You're like an old person. But, yeah, I, I like how, but you fucking apparently were killing it, dude. Um. Yeah, I taught I taught my my older brother how to skate, but once he got better than me, that was it for me. I was like, oh, if, if I can't fuck I can't you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I and then I and then I got really fat. snap his board. Yeah, yeah. I got really, <laughs> really fat. I got really <laughs> fat because all I did was play video games. I didn't exercise anymore. I didn't skate anymore. And my brother, love him to death. Like we we laugh about it now, but like he would literally beat me up just so we could go out to skate. He's like, stop playing video games. Like, let's go out to skate, and he would beat me up. And like, that's a good brother. <laughs> Not at the time, I didn't think so. No, but love that guy. He's punching you in your fucking nose. Yeah. And you're like broken nose. You're like, yeah. come on, bro. Well, yeah, yeah. But like, then he realized it at that. the time. He just wanted the best for me, you know. But I don't know. It's the so best funny. for you. I know. But, but how? How? Like, I think it's the reason why you how you skate though. That's the reason why you were able to do the tricks. Yeah, exactly. Like I skate very like like eighties like freestyle like vert slides and carving bowls and shit that I fucking love. Yeah, shit. the vert. Yes, but love that. Um. 
I'm I surprised ask, whenever you think about skateboarding, you don't like flinch. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking out for yeah. your brother. Well, that's the thing. I went, you know, you know Kevin Perry, right? He goes, that's a secret. I, yeah. That's why I don't skate. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're uh, we're good friends with Kevin, and he start he learned how to skate like a couple years ago, and we went to the skate park recently, and I guess I didn't, I guess I talked it up. Like, I, I didn't skate that well, and we got to the skate park, and I was, like, doing my thing, and he's like, oh, you can actually skate. I'm like, I can, I can hold my own. So as long as I can hold my own, I'm cool. I'm totally cool with that, you know? Okay, last last skate question. Sorry. Have you seen those videos? Because I know you're a Skate 3 fan, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Have you seen those videos of people doing Skate 3 glitches and gaps? Where it's like they jump up the – I'm going to do it. They here, go here, like here, this. show us. Show us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They fucking oh they go mock speed and end up on the top of a building. Yeah, dude, it's incredible. And it's so crazy how this game is 12 years old. She watches me play it every single night. And I played it last I, night. Huh? I was playing Skate One Wait, last night. Can oh, you, Skate One? Can you tell him that you have a Freddy Dread character? I, I think I told you, I literally made a character that looks exactly like you. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. it, looks like, it looks exactly like you. It's crazy. You need to. We, That's need, to, fucking we, need, to, awesome. we need to do a skate three sesh, um, and just be all Freddies. <laughs> <laughs> but but dude, it's incredible. Like I love how this game's twelve years old and we all still play it. Like it's amazing. Are you? Excited? It's, it's still a fantastic game. I are love you, it. Are you excited for Skate Four? No, they're gonna <laughs> fuck it up. No, really? You think so? A hundred percent. No, they can never. They, f dude, fuck video games today. Okay. They cannot yeah. reboot. Nobody, nobody can do it. It has not been like accomplished yet. They can't reboot a game, wow. except Demon Souls. They did that. Okay, got you. Damn. Yeah, I don't know. like. I just I want to keep my expectations low that's, because that's, if yeah. it does come out and it's great, I'll fucking yeah. come. That's, I'll have a great <laughs> fucking fat. Dude, amazing. I think uh, we feel that way with Call of Duty too. Okay, I was just about to bring up like um she's you know she played a lot of Call of Duty. I stopped playing Call of Duty at Black Ops Two, right? And then you kept going. You played Ghost. You Ghost. played Infinity War, like all this stuff. But and then remember, we had a FaceTime earlier, and I asked. I, you, I downloaded been... it. I got like ten minutes into the first mission, and I was like too stoned, and I was like, <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. Dude, I had to get out of it. I'm telling you, dude. Like I never would have thought Call of Duty Ghosts would have been the best Call of Duty in the entire series. And I want anyone watching this to agree with me or disagree with me. Cause I think you have to remember, a lot of people don't like storylines. They just go straight to the... Uh, true. Multiplayer. Multiplayer. Like a lot of people just want to do yeah. multiplayer. I loved campaigns. I am one of those people. What is your favorite zombie love? Like, zombie... Yes, what's your favorite zombie? Uh, like from The any... one where I can be fucking um, JFK. Oh, I like that yeah. one. That, that's, the, that's the OG Black Ops one, yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Dude, yeah, Kino Detertin, like, that's the first level ever. That one's such a classic. But dude, At the beginning, you would have to, like, lock it. You, you had to, like, um, for that one, you would have to, like, do a secret thing on your controller to get that level. <laughs> oh, yeah. holy shit. I totally forgot. Or, or the cheat codes. The, the cheat, cheat codes, codes, but you would have to get out the chair yeah, and then press something on the TV. Ones, you would have to do the triggers to get out of the, the belts that are trapped to you on the chair. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah you fuck it, and you yeah, can get yeah. out of it, and you can play the top down yeah, zombie. Yeah. That you was walk, cool. You can walk to the computer and type in that holy that shit, code, holy and then you get that, that levels. Yeah. You get the, all the levels. That's I think incredible. I I think my favorite one was the um, it, I think it was like a train station. Oh yeah, uh, it was like a banded train station is an apocalypse. Was, I think that was Black Ops Two. Yeah. I can't remember. I know it's just a train station, yeah. and like everyone has like memories of that train think, station. Yeah, yeah, the bus, the bus, yeah, bus station. the bus yeah, station. The bus station. That was Black Ops Two. Dude, I remember the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on the, the bus. bus. Yeah. Dude, people were And then you would like, I would be left out, and all the all my yeah. friends would be on the bus. Yeah. Like, Fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, but I I hated zombies, honestly, dude. It fucking scared me, dude. I hated, I, I never got into yeah, it. Yeah, I, I never got into it. It, it was, it was no. different. It felt like Left 4 Dead, and I hated Left 4 Dead. Oh, I dude, love Left 4 Dead. I'm about to end oh, this. Oh my god. I'm about to end this interview. How dare you? I'm about to end this interview. Why are you drinking Dasani, man? That is garbage water. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking agree with you. I agree with you because I got McDonald's last night and they only they have, only have Dasani. Dasani. yeah yeah why i know <laughs> well because it's by coke it's by coca-cola really yeah they own it they own Dasani. huh yeah you uh, would think it would be by coke would be better yeah, no, this shit it says i just no, notice it says non-carbonated you're fucking lying to me. <laughs> when i open this shit up it dude, sizzles like, like, yeah yeah you know that feeling when you have a sore throat and you drink room temperature water and it is the most devil-like feeling it's so yes. good. that's how i feel every time i drink dasani it gives me that exact same feeling and i don't know why 
But um, do you? It do you, is. It's a horrible invention. It's you, the worst. Do you know who uh, Patrick CC is? That YouTuber. No, I'm he, not familiar. Whole, Sorry. His, his whole thing is about drinking water, and he like despises Dasani, and it's like team fuck Dasani. I think if we knew how many waters that are not that filtered, I think it would be more gross out. Yeah, than, true. I rather than just not know that the water is not that filtered out. Breed a life over here, baby. Are you a coffee guy? No, absolutely See, not. See, I told I you. I have a story about drinking coffee <laughs> recently. Please, tell us. I want to hear this. So I've never, ever drank coffee. Never. Like, I'd like, I've sipped it, but I've never finished a full <laughs> one. I just, I like the flavor. I like the taste, but like, it's just not appealing to me. I hate hot drinks. Okay. Like, That's fair, I'd fair. rather drink uh, like an iced coffee. Okay. Um, Which is what I'm doing over here, by the way. So, so like, I've warm. never had any sort of caffeine intake. Yeah. Um, just the other day, I, not the other day, a few weeks ago, I started working on my new album, the Freddy's Inferno EP. Oh, yeah. And I was waking up at nine o'clock every day for two weeks oh, and, man, you know, man. waking up, I'm fucked. I'll go, I go to bed at like six and then I wake up at nine. I'm like, okay, this is fine. I'll just deal with it. <laughs> I got breakfast from Tim Hortons. Uh, Ooh. and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to try out one of these ice caps. They mm -hmm. can't be that bad. Yeah. So, uh. I drank. It was delicious. So it was a delicious, flavorful <laughs> drink. Okay. Yeah. It was amazing. amazing. But I drank it. I got a small and a small from... Okay, I I have a thing right here, but I'm not going to show you. It's okay. <laughs> I've yeah. been ashing my joints into it. Oh, incredible. And so it's about this big. Uh -huh. And it's not even... I don't even think it's a coffee. I think they put espresso in it. Just like a okay. little fucking... Oop. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I drank the entire thing within 10 minutes. It was fucking delicious. It was wow. tiny. And I could not sit still. I had to get up. I had to go find my girlfriend. I'll be like, fucking, we need to do something right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can't sit. I, mm -mm. I need to, like, get this out of my system. My heart was pounding. I thought I was about to have, like, an angina attack. <laughs> but I was, I was like, fuck. Like, oh, yeah. well, you I had... need to do something out, out of this little coffee, coffee. cup. Yeah. Like, why? And, Why'd and, that happen to me? And you you guys both deal with, like, some crazy anxieties i i i'm fortunate enough to be like manageable throughout days so i'm fine so coffee benefits me but like she can't stand coffee like she hates no it, it puts my anxiety through yeah. the roof yeah. like i like to feel how i feel right now mm -hmm. if it's yeah. anything else like i'm fucked yeah speaking of which are you cool with like like she has like a C thc cbd pen yeah and even that even that sometimes like ranks up her anxiety how are you with like weed or cbd and shit so with weed, uh, I used to be a big smoker, a huge smoker. Huge smoker. Uh, but then I stopped when I started doing heavier drugs because it would <laughs> fuck with my heart. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's not good. Like, it would just fuck with, like, yeah, everything. Yeah. So I stopped smoking weed. Wow. It was, wow. like, a two-year period where I, I didn't smoke weed and I was doing other drugs and shit. And then I stopped drugs, like, just all together one New oh, Year's. Yeah. And I just haven't touched them since, yeah. like, the, the specific drugs I was doing. And then I got back into weed, and I fucking love it. Oh, There's nothing right. wrong with it. Amazing. Uh, I smoked this. This is my favorite. Um, it's a brand called Divi. Okay. It's like basically smoking a Ooh, fucking placebo. Cool. Oh, wow. Okay, I, you can't see it, but it's got a 6% THC and 10% CBD. Ooh. And it gets me high. Like, I actually Amazing. feel high. I love that. But not, I don't have anxiety. It just yeah. gets me creative yeah. and, like, you know, I th wake I think, up a little bit. I think bit. when weed has... CBD, I think it has a control high. I feel like when it's straight THC, it's too much yeah. for, I think, people that are trying to deal with anxiety. I feel like when it has CBD, it kind of like gives you that calm yeah, level. Yeah, absolutely. For your, fans I agree. for your fans listening, because by the way, we are beyond honored that I searched on YouTube, this is going to be your second interview ever. Yep. But this is more of an interview. If you see the one with, if you listen to the one with Matt, I was so fucking drunk. Like, I was this close to blacking out. Dude, I was scared to talk. Like, it was not fun I, at all. There, nobody learned anything about me, I don't think. I, I hope you know, man. I love you so much, and I'm so glad that you're doing this with us because, like, I, I've always respected you from day one. And we met, we, we connected back in uh, 2019. It was, like, right when you dropped Weather, and I did, the, I did a remix of it. And yeah. you were like, dude, it's hard to remix my song. So, like, props to you. Or to take his vocals out. That was yeah, a good that, fucking remix, too. Yeah, that was and, an amazing and, and remix. Since day one, man, you, you know, we were all cool. But um, so, anyways, I'm, I'm very glad that you're doing this interview. But for all your I appreciate you inviting me because like, yes. I don't like doing interviews. And, of like, course. when you ask me, it's like, I can't think of someone who, 
who I feel more comfortable yeah. doing oh, it with. Oh, you're amazing. And that it's... means that means so much to us because like I think that's all we want from people when we interview them is just to be comfortable. Exactly. Like I don't want them to feel very like interviewee. Like, yeah, exactly. Like... I'm trying. I have questions, but I'm like, dude, I'm just gonna talk to you. Okay, so with your fans listening, right? Just so people get to know you, how like because to me right now you are acting completely normal, 100% yourself, Freddie. How high are you? Are you high? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm completely sober. I mean, I've wow. been smoking. Oh, there you go. Amazing. I've been switching in between these two. Please sponsor me, Envy. If you <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I got, I got these two flavors one, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm on a little bit of nicotine, <laughs> but I am not high. Yeah, 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 incredible. Well, there you go. Okay, you're doing great. Okay, going back, you said you had breakfast at Tom Hortons. Tom. <laughs> Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Get it right. Okay. <laughs> Get it right, American. Wait, I, I was gonna do the Instagram questions after, but shout out to uh, T R E F S seven. Uh, what does Freddie Dread eat for breakfast, and why? Ooh. I do. I've never seen you eat. I was gonna ask, like, what do you like? Like, do you to eat? stick? Do you stick in one little breakfast? Like for me. I'm very a particular person where like I stick with the same breakfast yeah. all the time every morning. I'm I'm almost like that. Yeah. Uh, for years, I, I I'm a, I'm the biggest fan of bagels. I Ooh. love bagels so much. What do you say? Like any say? every type of bagel, like <laughs> I would eat any type of bagel, put anything on it, cream cheese, peanut butter, jam. I don't give a fuck. Whoa, what? <laughs> what are you saying? Bagels. Bagels. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, that's where my Canadian accent comes in, doesn't Dude. it? Dude. That is incredible. I, I hope you know, I never want to like point out anyone's accent. That is the most incredible. I've never heard that ever in my life. No, when I say bagels, like people are like, I hear it. That's it. <laughs> I finally, I finally hear it. Oh my God. That's incredible. Bagels. It's, it's fucking hilarious because I'm in like a pretty central part. I'm like super close to America. Toronto is like a huge mixing pot of cultures and shit. Sure. Where if you go and like search up like what people in Toronto sound like, yeah. like their accents and yeah. shit. They do not sound like what, like I talk. Okay. Like I, I think I sound pretty American. But if you yeah, go you do, just to really Toronto, I, which is like yeah, forty minutes from me, yeah. it's yeah. like you're in fucking Jamaica or something. Okay. Oh wow. wow, whole different thing. Do you speak any French? No. Okay. <laughs> but like, well, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I mean, why? He's like, why would you ask me that? Um, there's a lot of there's well, a lot of I, French. I do know a yeah. little bit of French, like yeah, Dejeuner, but... Je m'appelle. Bon Dieu, dead. comment ça va? Ça va bien et yeah. tout. Et... <laughs> et je oh, m'appelle Toilette. My... He says little. He's like, yeah, I just know the whole language. Dude, you should just create a hook in French and just fucking. I did. I did je one time. And I... <laughs> Canadian French and like actual French from like people from France. Yeah. Two different fucking things. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, two yeah, different sure. things. So I I said a line in French and I like messaged my my friends who live in france who are the people who produced uh doom set oh, oh. Sodier and uh nick and five x's and i was like does this sound good is this like good french <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. just like uh yeah sure it's like when you google tra google translate something <laughs> yeah. is this good yeah, is this well that's what i want to know like have you heard that new kali uchis and sizza song it's it's, mm -hmm. not, it's so fucking beautiful i'm not the biggest r&b guy um just because like I think, you I think you wish you could be well, into... I'm not, I'm not... I love what you just said there. You're, I'm not a big RB guy because I'm married. <laughs> well, what is that? Wait, explain that. Think about 90% like, like, <laughs> of like <laughs> R&B listeners are people that are down bad, heartbroken, horny, and they just... You know what I'm saying? I'm, so he's saying our marriage has nothing to do with sex drive. What, <laughs> he's well, like... Saying, like, <laughs> like it's, all, it's all just like sex, heartbroken, blah, blah, blah. Like... I, I, I'm not heartbroken. I've never been heartbroken, dude. I've been with her since I'm 16, you know, so. Um, I'll translate what you just said. I'm not a simp. I, my life is perfect. I have no need for R&B. Yeah, exactly. But I have <laughs> so much respect for it, like, as a producer. It's fucking incredible work. Oh, my Anyways, God. The, the so, music, like, the actual yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. So R &B. SZA, in this song, she has a whole verse in Spanish, and it's flawless. SZA and does? or SZA. 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 That's what I'm saying, because Cali does a whole oh, Spanish yeah. album, right? But SZA is, like, flawless Spanish, so I'm curious how easy Justin Bieber knows how to speak Spanish. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, no, <laughs> thank you. Like, I'm curious how easy it is for these artists, like, yo, you want to... You want to, you know, do a Spanish banger and like they kill it. So, um, yeah, I wonder how hard that is. So, you know, know. <laughs> for me, it, I had I had to get like people to like, yeah. OK, no, this is all right. French. 
Wow. It's good enough to put out. Hey, man, there you go. You definitely need to know the language to like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do you do make you a song like that? Do you that? understand French more at all, or no? No. Okay, no. Gotcha. You learn it. You learn it in elementary school and in wow. high school, but it's something that I never really piqued my interest. I I do not care about French. If I'm gonna learn a language, I would like to learn like Portuguese. Yeah. Or like Japanese oh or something. Thank you. You just transitioned in my next question. Okay. Shout out to Guru. You know Guru, Gangstar. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Amazing, right? Um, G- Guru did a side project called Jazzmatazz. Are you familiar with this project? I have heard of it. I okay. don't know if I've, no, uh, I've, I've, I've never listened, listened to, it. to it all the way, but I'm aware of it, right? Guru, Gangstar, they're, they're famous for sampling lots of jazz records, right? Shout out DJ Premier, Icon. Um, and Ju- uh, Guru just got with a bunch of jazz artists and they made a jazz album while he's rapping, singing, flowing, almost like poetic, right? It's incredible. Would you ever, in the next five years, because you show a lot of love to Brazil, show a lot of love to Portuguese samples, all this stuff, would you ever do a Freddie Dread slash Bossa Nova slash Brazilian project? Yes, I would. That would. I, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Oh, huh? amazing. Okay, great. I think Ever he, since great, Chief right? Keef did the, <laughs> did, uh, I think it was... Fanino, he did one of his songs, oh, and he oh. had an, an orchestra. I don't know this. Wait, really? Yeah, it was just him, and he's singing, he's singing the song, and he's got, like, violins, cellos, wow, yeah, yeah. trumpets, drums, and shit. Yeah. It's all behind him. It's, oh, wow. It's a masterpiece. And ever yeah, since I saw wow. that, I was like, yeah. hopefully one day yeah. that I could do that. Uh, one of my dreams is to yeah. get Lisa Ono to go on tour with me. Ooh, and, wow. like play cha-cha oh wow and, like sing her part oh wow i think that you should guys amazing. do like a live at least like a, a, if, it, if you can't i mean because i know covid's kind of like weird right now sure. but like even like a like a small desk little we'll performance like a tiny, like desk, a tiny desk performance Dude, that would be incredible i hope you know like we're speaking this thing this that is 100 percent happening with like uh, that is 100 percent happening absolutely talking about I tour so. i want to just I, say i'm too lazy yeah. i can't i can't get shit together yeah. like the thought of getting an orchestra together and that's gonna be on me like, yeah i have to make that effort about it, dude kick jeff's ass into it man let him worry about it wait what, <laughs> I what, should. what were you gonna say about tour? i, I gotta gonna put say, jeff to work sometime right i was gonna say um about tour i, I think you're a great performer i was i just want to say that now like you're a great performer Thank you so much. That means a lot because I fucking hate it. Let me. I'm gonna explain to the world here. Okay, this beautiful man over here. uh, You're you're so funny. I think you're aware of how much talent you have, but also not. Okay, and so he he has this incredible show, right? Shout out with uh, Savage Gas, right? Gatsby, right? Oh, I miss him. (laughs) Right, and you have this show October in October, right? In LA, and we go and we're in the VIP with you, right? Hanging out with Olivia and everything, and. You are so nervous, right? And you're you're just like, oh fuck this, dude! I need to go, like blah blah, blah right? You're so nervous. You're like, I need a fucking singer or whatever, right? And so you go on stage, right? And it literally, I thought your microphone was turned off because it sounded identical to the recording. It was so fucking mm-hmm. good, man. And your energy was great. The crowd is changing, it. and you're not like, hey, hey, no, 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 you're rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> you are full of You energy. sound exactly the same. It's yeah. not like you were high pitched or low pitched. It's yeah. like the same and thing. And I don't mean to get on here and just suck your dick, but I'm telling you, dude, <laughs> it was just incredible. <laughs> sure. It was incredible. I, so yeah. We and know. the first thing Thank you asked you. us was, was that was okay? Good, yeah. Was that okay? Yeah. And, and we're over here in the booth. Like, you know, when you're like sitting, but you're still trying to like jump, you know? We're yeah. Like, weather you know but it was so good dude. you were great yeah right? uh, i appreciate that a lot because like yeah i have no self-awareness on stage i just get up there and i my end goal is to fucking get off the stage <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're like let me rap faster speed the songs up fucking five seven tones <laughs> next transition uh for those who don't know we have a song together um and i think it's called shut up featuring you and little toe right and when they hear my name dude oh, oh my to hear that from him is incredible. I think that song is a perfect representation of how you work and how incredible you are as an artist, right? For those of that know, that song is compiled of three different verses from three different songs that you made years ago. Like, and, like three or four years ago at this point, yeah. And I begged you, I was like, Fredward, please, I need 
vocals, dude, just anything. And for some reason, it felt better. It, it was, it felt so much cooler. Like maybe because I'm known to do remixes and stuff. <laughs> But it just felt so great that you're like, here, dude, here's a bunch of vocals. Go for work, it. Work on it. And they worked. They worked, they worked. so well um, over it. And I just, I love that, dude. I think that it makes that song so much better, you know? I'm I'm glad that you, like, did that song, too. Like, oh, it, it was a perfect rendition of those lyrics. Yeah. What I love to do is send producers vocals. Because when the producer takes, at like, a hold of like they get creative yeah, yeah. uh why, why can't i think of the word creative uh uh oh my god creative juice creative uh when they get creative control when yeah. they get 100 percent creative control of the song that's when the song comes together it's yeah, not yeah. you get i feel like when people send me beats it's yeah. like oh yeah that's a good beat yeah. but then i can't think of like what would be the best thing to go yeah. over yeah. this most of my songs gtg cha cha uh oh dar oh darling yeah, yeah were songs i recorded and then put the vocals on oh wow that's incredible like that's i incredible. i didn't i i made the song around the vocals what matched with the that style amazing. the most and i feel like for you being a producer you got to have that creative mm -hmm. juice the creative control yeah, to make that, that song the way it sounds dude, dude, instead dude. of letting the rapper the person wow. who does literally just puts vocals on it yeah i feel the same way of like I always feel weird when I sit down at my desk and I'm like, okay, time to make a lo-fi beat. Like it, it feels so weird. It almost feels like I'm like forcing it, you know? Um, uh, it felt good back in the day where like I would just make a beat because I wanted to and then it just fit in the lo-fi community, you know? Uh, but I think we progressed so much as artists and, but like Six made a great point. Like I don't, I, I just don't know what it is. Your lyrics, your I think flow, it's, the, it's the layering of the vocals. Yeah, awesome. There's just so many vocals, but they're different, but they're all you. Yeah. Which that's crazy to me. And it doesn't get old. I, I'm serious. Like, you, how many times have you said bitch or fuck or I'm going to kill you or I'm going to stab you or shoot you? You said it so many times, but it doesn't. <laughs> it feels different each time. Like, I don't know. There's this robot chicken episode <laughs> where, <laughs> where this guy dies and he goes to heaven and he sees like a book. I'm pretty sure it's from robot chicken. I could be wrong, yeah. but he's like, you can ask anything like yeah. what, how many times you kissed your mom or something, yeah, how many yeah. times you sent a text or some shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly what they say, but it's along those lines. Yeah, it's yeah. a book and you ask a question. I want to go, wait, if I die and I get that option to see how many shits I've taken and how many times <laughs> I said bitch, yeah, because yeah. I don't fucking know, because yeah, I yeah. do layer my vocals. I layer that three times oh, ago, wow. and I learned that technique from Baker. Shout out Baker.